All right, folks. Here it is. It is my official APA. Well, there it is. APA football review. We're going to talk about that today for a little bit. Uh, so I finished up week one of the 1978 season playing every single game. In fact, even going into the pro football helper and putting the 10 games in uh, into the helper after the fact, which took me a bunch of time. But anyway, I got all 14 games in. I did play, uh, I think I played a game or two of 76 and then a couple of quarters of 1979. So I got multiple, multiple hours into this game. I got to have maybe close to 65 to 70 hours into gameplay for this game. So, um, yeah, I think that's enough time to talk about it. All right, so let's just go right down my list. I got some pros and I got some cons, by the way. And um, I'm just going to talk about the game. I'm not going to talk about the APA company or any of their policies or, any, or anything else with APA. I'm just going to talk about the football game. All righty. And I'm not going to, you know, compare this to any other football game again. You know, I have a lot of football games that I like, but I'm just going to review this one today. So let's not let's not go down the Internet route of, oh, you don't like this. OK, I'm talking about football today and that's what we're going to talk about. OK, first thing is this is a great game right out of the box. Take it out of the box and you start playing. It's that simple. It's two dice and charts. And that's what, you know, APA games are. Two dice and charts, and you're off and running. I feel of the four that I have, baseball, hockey, golf, and football, four. Out of those four, I really feel this is their best. I don't know why. I just feel it's their best. I feel right out of the box. You can just play it, and it feels like a football game, and it's really fun, and it's easy to, to navigate. And, um... And right out, right out of the box, I was playing this game and having fun. The baseball game might be a little bit easier out of the box, um, but for some reason, I just feel the football game for me uh, is is their best game. Uh, it, as I mentioned, it's it's easy to play. I mean, you can just play it strictly from the rules out of the book, and and you'll be fine. But you can make it as complex as you want. Okay, you really can, you know, dig into the master rules and add some things in there and, you know, change your personnel if you want, and that'll reflect your your offense and defense's ratings, and you can really kind of split that into passing and running. So you can make this as complex as you want or as easy as you want, and both work pretty well as far as I'm concerned. Um, I happen to like the APA engine, okay? I like rolling the dice and then coming over here, and taking my chart and, you know, looking at my chart, okay? I happen to like that game engine, okay? So there's no results off the cards. Oh, there's my dog coughing up over there. There's no results off the cards. There's no results off of fast action cards. It's all, again, you, you look at the card, you get the number, you go to the chart. That's how Apple works. I don't have to tell you that. That's how Apple works. And I like it for, for baseball and hockey, and now I like it for football. And even golf. I, I like the golf. I got to get back to the golf. But anyway, talking football today. Um, but I like the app engines. I like using charts in my game. Okay. I have other games that don't have charts, and I, and I like that too. But the charts don't bother me. So that'll bring me to my first con, if you will, after talking about some of the pros. The first con will be you do have to like charts. If you're someone who wants results right off the card, or off a fast action card or somewhere else, um, and you don't like looking up charts, then yeah, it's not going to be the game for you. Then probably none of the APA games are going to be for you. So you do have to like looking up charts. Once you get used to that, it's not a big deal. You start to memorize some things. Even with so many different results in football, there are so many results in this football game, especially with the master book, and I'll get to that in a minute, that it's hard to memorize it, but I've been getting a little bit better at it. You know, I'm learning that like the 26, 27, 28, those are kind of your scramble numbers. So when I go to the chart, I'm expecting a scramble. You know, 35s and 36s, those are your penalties. So I'm expecting that. Ones and twos are usually something unbelievably good. And uh, then you get some numbers that are your, your incomplete pass numbers. And then you have some penalty numbers. And then you get some fumble numbers. So you, you start to realize that when you look at the chart, you know, oh, man, if I'm going here, it's a penalty. Or if I'm going here, it's something good. If I'm going here, it's incomplete. So you have an idea. You start to learn some of those things. Even with so many different results, uh, you do start to to um, 
to follow some of the patterns in the game. So you do have to like charts, but again, like any other app of game, you do start to memorize that. And even if you don't memorize it, you have an idea what's happening in the game. Okay. The charts, the magic of the charts is they're um they're location specific. Okay. There's four zones. There's inside your 14, then there's from your 15 all the way to their 31, I believe it is. And that's where the bulk of the action takes place in that that range there. And then you got their 10 to 20, and then inside their 10. So there's four zones. And, it, and the red zone's kind of broken up into a couple of areas, so it really breaks it down even finer. And all the charts are, are zone-specific. So um, you know, your fumbles, your interceptions, your penalties, they're really um, geared towards where you are on the field. And I do, I do like that. So, you know, you might get a result of a fumble, you know, and it's like minus 10 yards, you know, in, in whatever. And well, that's going to be a safety if you're inside, you know, your own 10 yard line or whatever. Whereas, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get a result like that if you were at their 10 yard line, you, you know, you wouldn't have a fumble back into your own end zone, you know, and I'm kind of just kind of using that as a loose example, but I mean, it really feels like when something happens, when there's an interception or a fumble or a penalty, it's like, wow, you know, if this was any other place on the field, this wouldn't make any sense. But because they're, they're really, I feel like they're really geared to where you are on the field. At least that, that's my feeling of it. So the charts are very uh, location specific, and I do like that. But again, you do have to like the charts. Uh, another pro for the game are, are the penalties. I will say the penalties work for me. I, I, you know, they work in this game. Uh, there's some games you play, whether it's hockey or or football, at least for me, hockey, football, and the penalties wreck the game. And it's like, oh, here's another penalty. It's wrecking the game, and this is happening, that's happening. And um, in this game, it doesn't do that. Even when I get back-to-back penalties, I can, I, I, it still feels like it's part of a football game. You know, ne- never have, at least in the 60, 70 hours I've played, have I felt like, oh, we go. Here's another penalty. The game's getting wrecked now. I've never felt that way. I don't know why. I just don't feel feel like the penalties the penalties come up enough, but not they're not overbearing. Whereas some of the hockey games they play, oh man, another penalty, another penalty, another penalty. And it just feels like it wrecks the flow of the game, whereas this one doesn't. You know, I, I just that's just kind of how I feel is that penalties really kind of work in this game. Um, let's talk about some of the other cons in this game. Um the biggest one is the season price, and I will agree. It, it's the most expensive of all their games. Probably the most expensive of any game out there is is the price of a football season. Um, it you know, it depending on what year you get. Obviously, there's a difference in price of you know maybe twenty or thirty dollars depending on which year you get, and it's about you know one and a half or one and a quarter times the amount of a baseball season. You know, if you, well, if you were to get the baseball season with all the extras for like 1995, I think it'd be up around 120, 130 dollars or so, maybe more, and that's about the price of a football season. So if you were to get a baseball season and all the extras, that's where you would be with a football season. Uh, some of the seasons that I buy from the 70s for baseball are a little bit cheaper, you know, and um, so the football season is obviously probably one and a half times that, or one one and a third times that. So the season price, yep, I, I will agree season price is is high you do get 12 or 1300 cards that's that's the thing though you get a ton of cards i think now they got it down to 50 players a team you know something like that so um you know if you come in around you know what's it what there's 30 teams now so that's about 1500 cards so you get a ton a ton of cards in this game um but the, the season price is is high i will agree with that um, I took a chance and I bought the game and I bought it. One of my favorite seasons that they had, and I'm not regretting it again. I got 50 or so hours into the 1978 season. <laughs> you know, if, if I do the math, if, if I, you know, charge myself $3 an hour to play this game, that's $150 right now that I got uh, or more. That I got into this game. So for me, is, is it worth, has, has it been worth $3 an hour? Yes. Yes, it has. For me, it has been. Most games I play here on my tabletop, I'm getting $3 an hour's worth at least out of my gameplay, out, out of my fun. 
you know, would I would I would I pay three dollars for this last hour? Last night's game between the Packers and the Lions, when I I did the uh, the end of the third quarter and the entire fourth quarter, that was an amazing finish for three dollars. I mean, come on. You know, I think Ron said there was 40 people watching last night as the Lions and the Packers from 1978, you know, not in household names, but the game they played and played out on the table and the excitement I had was unbelievable. So, yeah, I'm not, you know, the the price can be an issue for some people. It absolutely is. I've gotten my money's worth out of it. That being said, um, I probably won't be buying a ton of seasons like I like I did with hockey. That's for sure. Um, but every now and then, if I can save up and get a season, I will, because there's, there's some seasons I really, really do want to get. And I did buy one more, and um, I unboxed it the other day, 2001. I wanted that Tom Brady Super Bowl season. I, that's a collector's item for me, and I want to play some of those games. And going through that season, I mean, just brought back so many memories. You know, so the, the money I spent on that season, just just the enjoyment of going through all the cards and separating the teams alone was was part of the fun of that. It really was. So, um, you know, again, yep, season price can be an issue with this. And it turned me off in the longest time. You know, how many you know people were playing Apple football and I would write in. It's like, you know, not enough seasons. The seasons are too expensive. Count me out. And I was those are my comments. They were. And then I saw someone. You know, Apple 66 are playing the game. And here's this guy with his phone up playing the game. And I'm I'm like, man, this looks so easy. You know, he's not you no know, going through charts and having complexities and this and that. He's playing the game and he's enjoying it. And he got the 66 and a last second touchdown. And that's what sold me on it. And I was like, okay, this game looks like it. it's easy and it's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna get it. And I am gonna shell out the money for a, a season I really, really like, 1978, and I'm gonna give it a go. And you know, in, in worst case, okay, in worst case, um, what I was probably going to do is, uh, you know, if I didn't like it, then I was going to sell it. And, and I don't doubt that I, I couldn't sell a brand new 78 set, you know, for 80 or 90 bucks and, and at least make some of my money back. Okay, that's what I thought I could really do. And um, but I'm not going to sell it now, obviously, because I really, really like it. But the season price. Yep. And, and I and I hear that. Uh, but But let's be fair to everybody has spends money on something that someone doesn't approve of. I know people that got, you know, walls of, you know, records that they collect thousands of dollars worth of records just sitting there you know, on the wall. And I play them once in a while. He says, but you know, holy cow, look at that. I know people that get, you know, tons of DVDs as far as a collection or tons of video games at 60 bucks a whack. You know, I know people that collect cars. So everybody, you know, and, and I look at all those people like, oh, man, there's no way I would spend all this money on that. And they look at me and it's like, man, I had no way I would spend all that money on an Apple football season. So, again, everybody has their own thing that they spend money on that other people don't approve of. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, that will bring me to the available seasons. That was the other reason I shied away from Apple football for a long time is. uh it didn't have enough seasons, at least in stock. And I think what they're doing is that um, they're transitioning to the newer charts and the newer games. So they have to redo the seasons, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, because there are a lot of seasons floating around out there. And um, in the chat, Ron Spursky says, I have an, uh, an original 81 old set available cheap. Well, if it was a newer 81 set, I would absolutely buy it from you because I'm looking to get the new 81 set. I, but the older, the older seasons... The older style cards, the older charts, not a fan of, and I'll, and I'll get to that in one second, but I'm really not a fan of that. But the, the available seasons were the other thing that was my concern, probably because they have just about everything you want in hockey and baseball that were kind of spoiled with that with APA. But uh, the football seasons, they don't have enough 70s and 80s for me in stock, which is probably a good thing because I'll be trying to find a way to buy all those seasons, even though you know I probably can't afford them right now. But I would probably try to... um to buy some seasons. So see, so season price and available seasons are a couple of things that, that I shot away from the game on at first. And now they're not that, that huge of an issue for me. Cause obviously I'm playing the game and I'm loving the game. Let's get back to the game a little bit. Um, it feels like football and you know, whether you're playing uh, basic or master or what, whether you're infusing your own mods into the game, it just feels like you're at a football game, the ebbs and the flows and, 
you know, how many times it's, it's third and 17 and Ken Stabler, you know, like Greg says, finds a way to roll that 66 and complete the third and 17 for a first down. It's uncanny how often that happens with the better guys. It just happens. And it was the luck of the dice, but it just, it just happens. You know, it really does. And so it feels like football and the results are baked into the charts, much like um, the baseball games and even the hockey games a little bit. It just like, how does it do that? It just does. And um, there was someone that just posted the other day and I, oh, I'm sorry if I get his name. And he posted on Ogard's site. That's the site. If you got Apple football, go to Ogard62.net. That's just a plethora. Yes, I use the word plethora of stuff to make your game. Um, I don't want to say better, but make make your game, you know, give you some ideas on how to add some things to the game to really make it well. Because let's face it, cards and dice games, they give you a base play. All right. And no matter what game it is, you get a base to start with. And then from there, and the great thing about the app of games is because you get that solid, solid base that you could tweak a few things here and there in the baseball and the hockey and the and the football games. If you want a little bit more realism, you know, the timing of the game. I just downloaded a new timing sheet from Ogard's site, a uh, Greg, Greg's site. And, um, you know, so instead of just the 30 seconds, 15 seconds the entire way, which you can do with no issues, you know, when you get down to the last two or three minutes of the game, you start, you look at this chart and whatever the play was and what happened, are you trying to hurry up? Are you playing slow? Are you playing normal? You get now eight seconds, nine seconds, 12 seconds, you know, 45 seconds. It gives, and that feels like a real football game would feel toward the ha- end of the half of the end of the game. You know, an incomplete pass is really not going to be 15 seconds. In, in the gaming world, you have to have some kind of base. So, 30, uh, 15 seconds for an incomplete pass is what Apple uses. And I think a few other games kind of do the same thing. But it's not going to take that long. But with all the other things that happen in the game, that's kind of how it balances out. And you can stick with that, or you can go to this other fine-tuning chart and really fine-tune your timing in the game, which I've been adding to, and um, it's, I've really been enjoying it. But things have baked in. But anyway, getting back to the, um, uh, the Greg site there, uh, someone had just wrote down, um, asked a question about, I called for a medium pass and it was good for four yards. And so a medium pass is not four yards. Medium pass is, I think, is over 10 yards in the game. And the guy says, um, well, that was a check down. That's how check downs are baked into the game. So that means the quarterback looked for his receiver, wasn't open, checked down to a back and got four yards. Baked into the game, like I was saying. Um, and so, so he wrote an article and he's like, what I do if I call for a medium pass and it turns out to be a really short gain of like, you know, one to five or one to six yards, he goes, then I'm going to roll the dice and see which back it went to. You know, I was thinking, you know, odd or even, you know, to go to the the fullback or the halfback, but most likely you're not going to dump it off to a wide receiver. He's going to be down the field, but a four yard gain on a medium pass, that means you check down. So the check downs are built into the game. And so he had a, a little system where it's like, I'm going to throw that to the back rather than the receiver. And that made a lot of sense to me. And again, a lot of this is common sense. And so I'm going to be using that in my games as well. Also, bad snaps are a part of the game. You know, you you go for a punt. I mean, the game the other day I was playing the, the Rams at the Eagles, 78. Two times in a row I rolled on the punches card and I got the F number. And it was like minus 16 D8 or something like that, meaning that it's minus 16 yards behind the line of scrimmage and the defense recovers. So that tells me, it was a bad snap or the, or the, the punter had to go right to his hands. And that happened to me twice in a game. And so that stuff happens. And so it's baked into the card. So it's like, that's kind of neat. That's one of the results, you know, not even a rare play, just a regular play. And that happened. So things are baked into the charts. And I really, really do um, like how that's done. Um, let me see. I think I talked about, you do have to like charts again, if you're not a chart person, then this is obviously not the game for you. Um, let me get to, um, one of the other, the cons of the game, uh, the game length. Okay. The game takes a long time to play like just about every other play by play football game. I own it's, uh, it just takes me hours to play. It just does. And it's not any fault of the game. It's not like the plays take so long. It's just, you're calling, you know, you got 120 or 130 plays to resolve, you know? At a minute or two or play, 
you know, again, 120 plays, you know, at, at a minute, that's two hours right there. That's going at a pretty good clip, two hours, you know, because first of all, you got to call the play, you know, or, or find a way to roll to get the play. Then you roll the dice and you find out what happened. And it does take about a minute to resolve, sometimes a little bit more. I play slower. I don't, I don't hurry on stuff like this. I don't want to hurry. So for me, it takes a little bit longer. But the length of the game was the other um, – the other thing people complained about, I would say, or, or talked about, because, hey, how long does it take to play? Well, it takes me a long time. My, my first few games was taking me four hours. I was taking an hour, a quarter. To, 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 for me to resolve those 30 to 40 plays was taking me an hour. I was learning the game. I was playing slow. At some point, I was working in the mods from the community into my game, so I was kind of remembering those and writing those down. I was keeping track of everything. Uh, when I went over to the Pro Football Helper, which I'm using exclusively now when I play this, uh, I did get one quarter done offline, just myself, in about 30, 31 minutes. I think I timed it at about a half hour. So if I wanted to, and I went at a good clip, but I wasn't distracted, and I just kind of focused on things, I could probably do a game in a couple of hours, probably even less if I got it, depending what happens in the game, obviously. You know, penalties. And things like that, you got to stop and, and get on the rabbit hole. They take a lot longer. Uh, but the, the game length was one of the um, the cons. But, again, I don't know too many play-by-play -play football games you're going to get done in an hour. I, I just don't, don't see that happening. And, again, when you compare it to, like, baseball, which most people play baseball, and you can do a baseball game in, you know, in tw 20 minutes, yeah. I mean, two hours or so is a long time compared to a baseball game. So, there you go. Um, let me see here. Going down to my list here. Um, and so so a lot of there's a lot of talk too about the cards. All right. You get so many cards in this game. Okay. Well, the cards, these are the stars. These are the stars to the game, is the cards. Let's face it, that's what you're playing Apple for. And um, you know, and and some people are like, well, there's too many cards, and there's too many cards that, uh, you know, are not being used, and they sit off to the side, and this and that, and uh, some of that is true. Okay, in my first few games, I found myself rolling off of defensive cards for uh, interception and fumble returns, and then uh, there was a couple of times when I needed to actually roll on the offensive lineman cards. So it's not like you can throw these cards away. It's not like you can just take the ratings on them and throw them away. There are times you need them. Now, granted, most of the returns are zero or one yard or something like that. But occasionally you get a fumble. They'll fumble the ball and maybe they'll get a, a decent return on it. So you do roll on the odd cards from time to time, especially with the rare plays come into to, to play. Uh, the offensive linemen come into play a lot more with the rare plays than the normal game. But it but it does happen. OK, Um but again, the, the star, th this is the star of the game. These are the stars of the game are the cards. And, uh, th you know, there was talks. I think they tried a, a team sheet for defense at one point, and that would have made the seasons cheaper, but you wouldn't have as many cards because it's all done on a sheet. And, and I, I, at first, I liked that idea. I says, I like the idea of having – uh, a cheaper season and guys that I'm not going to really roll off their cards all that much. You know, the offensive line, defensive line, just have a sheet for them. Right. Until I bought the 78 season and I had all the cards in front of me. Okay. Until I had the cards in my hand. Okay. And guys that I'm, I'm probably never, never going to use. Um, Mike McCoy of the Oakland Raiders. He's kind of the backup nose tackle. He may or may not ever be played on the table, but you know, like Apple 66 has said in our chat, you know, this feels good. Having this guy in my hand feels much more personal to me than just, you know, having this guy on a chart. Okay. It just does. I don't know how to describe it. When I'm playing cards and dice, I want the cards. Now, granted, you know, I, I, I enjoy my fast action football from Downey Games, and that's a team sheet. And my quick decks football from Grant over at 49 Sports, that's a team sheet, and I like them too. Okay, I really do. Uh, having the cards, though, that's what you're paying for. These are the stars of the game, and I, I, I prefer the cards. And, and you know, I've, I've flipped to the dark side. I, I joke about that. I've flipped to the dark side on the card thing. I would rather pay the extra money and have the cards. And when I heard that, 
I was like, well, that's stupid. Why would you pay extra money for all these other cards? Well, now that I've played the game and I played it a lot, having the cards does mean a lot to me now. It 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 just does. Have I'd rather have the cards than a team sheet. And I I would um I don't want to say gladly spend the money on on the more money, but spending the money on the season now feels worth it to me. Having the cards, it just does. And some people complain about you know cards not being used. The only cards that I don't really roll off of are the receiver cards, which is kind of weird. But it you know the the runs are all you know the running backs you run uh, you you roll on the kickers obviously the returners. Uh, the defensive cards you roll for interceptions and fumbles, uh, and but the, for passes it's the quarterback. So the receivers are the ones that you very rarely roll off of their card, but you still need their ratings, and um, and a few other things like that. So um, that's kind of um, that that so it is kind of weird. But I'd rather still have the cards in front of me. And and how I have my setup, you see my setup. I have the receivers and the running backs in front of me with all their ratings. And again, you know I'll probably never really roll off a Dave Casper's card, except if he picks up a, a holy roller fumble. But I like still like having that card in front of me. I do. I'd rather have him on a card than just on a team sheet. I don't know how it works. It just works for APA, and so I do like the card. So, again, that's the argument on the cards. Um, another con might be the symbols. There's the, the symbols are really weird in Apple football on the cards. And it took me a while to get used to it. And in my very first video of me setting it up, I was kind of out of my mind setting up a team and I couldn't figure it out. And, you know, I, I never, I hadn't even played the game yet. Once I played the game, everything made sense. So I probably should have played a game and then tried to set up a team. Uh, but, you know, you get your PA, your TA, your TB, your OAK, your W56. What do all these things mean here? You get used to it. It doesn't even take a full game to get used to the fact that PA, that's your punter. And I and I will say that it is awkward, you know. I don't know if I can find my punter here. Um, yeah, okay, so Errol Mann. He's list, listed as a fullback and a safety. That That's totally confusing for a guy that's a kicker, you know. Ray Guy, we all know Ray Guy, right? Well, look at him. He's, um, if I can get that to focus. Of course, I can't. Well, it's oh, come on, card. He's listed as a fullback in a safety, but he's the punter. But on his card, it says PA. So I know he's the punter, and this guy's KA and KOA. So he's the kicker. And it takes a little bit of getting used to that. It takes a while to get used to that, in that, you know, a W65 is an interception. Why W is interception? Nobody knows, but it is. So it just takes a little bit to get used to the symbols, to know who your kickers are, who your returners are, and what an interception is. It doesn't take that long, but it is weird. It's weird having your receivers called ends. I don't, you know, I don't think they've been called ends in 50 years, but they are, you know. But EB, those are your receivers. ET are your tight ends, and you know, and your kickers are called, you know, halfbacks, fullbacks, and safeties. For whatever reason, but they have the kicker symbol on there, so you know that they're the kickers, okay? And then if you get the roster, um, then you can, you know, you'll see who the kickers are anyway, too. So the symbols are kind of weird, and that that would be a con. But but again, after you play one game, or not not even one game, once you played a couple of quarters, and you know what to look for now with your symbols, they just make sense, and you you just kind of get used to it. It's like okay, that's how they're gonna do it. I can't fight it. But I can just get used to it, and and it doesn't take that all that long. Um, another thing is um, there's so many ways to play defense in this game, and you know, I play solo, so for me, I need to find a way to have the defensive line called for me, defensive play called for me. This is included with the game, and Greg talked about this um, on our chat there. And it's just you roll the dice over here, and it you know it tells you if you're in uh, G S or D depending on how many points your defense has. And that's one way you do it. And then the uh, the automatic settings over here is what I use. It kind of overrides everything. So, you know, if you got a third and 15, you're not playing the run. You're, you're playing deep. And so I like, to, I like to use that chart there. But then I got the defensive cards here. And this, this, this was the best $8 I've ever spent in gaming. Okay? You get from plus 25 to negative 25. And... Immediately when I started using these, the game changed for me. It really did. And what what the defensive cards do 
is they allow you to be e- either an A, B, or C index. And, you know, the better the defense, you know, again, all the way to plus 25, you know, there's a lot of C index on here. That means the defense is really good and they're going to force the offense into a C index. Um, but again, you know, on any given play, maybe not on this particular card because it's so strong, but, you know, if, you, if you're if you in between, the, you know, the minus four and the plus four, you know, there's going to be A, Bs, and Cs in that card. Uh, along with, you know, on a run play, they're playing pass, and on a pass play, they're playing run. And what I like about that is is that's kind of a built-in defensive coordinator for me. So the defensive coordinator calls in a play, or here's what we're going to do, and, okay, it's it's a run situation, but they're playing pass. That's football. You know, how many times you see it on TV, it's like, oh, they're, they're playing the pass and they run it. Oh, what were, they, what were they doing, you know? Now they get five yards because everyone's back playing the pass. That's football. And I like how it, it comes out of the A, B, and C index because to me, and again, I talked this, about this on the chat with uh, Jeff and Greg, for me, when I see, you know, A, B, or C index, that kind of indicates to me that someone made a play. So if I see it in the C index, that means the defense made a play or the offensive player didn't make a play. So it's going to be better for the defense, where if it's an A index, as you know, A is the best for offense. So that means either the offense made a block or maybe the uh, the receiver cut and got open or defender fell down. So, again, you can kind of visualize any scenario in your mind. And so these defensive cards, $8 from APA, this is how I call my defense. I will override certain plays with you know with this over here or just common sense you know if it's if it's on the three yard line i'm not playing deep you know i might play standard but i'm either playing ground i'm not playing deep so i use my common sense so i roll the dice i'll get the play here as a starting point and then if i need to modify it i will but um there's so many ways to play defense between calling your own defense using the defensive cards you know using this chart over here or whatever else you way to do it. There's so many ways to play defense in this game, and and I really do like that. As far as calling your plays, well, I, I put that as a con, calling your own plays, and then I but I put question marks on that, calling your own plays, because um, I I like to watch the game unfold in front of me, and so many games you roll the dice or flip a card, and it tells you what the play is and who's going to get the ball. Okay, so I flip a card, it's going to be a run. I flip another card or I roll the dice. Tony Dorsett's going to get the carry. And then you follow the play out. And, and that is kind of fun. Is that way there, you know, okay, this guy's getting the ball. He's going to run. And so you don't got to think about it. So, you, so the dice and the fast action cards are, are playing the game for you. And I, I really enjoy that. In this game, that option's not there, at least not out of the box. The idea is for you to call your own plays. Uh, some people have come up with some innovative charts to roll dice and see what's going to happen. And, you know, so you can, it'll call the play for you, but it's not out of the, out of the box. I call my own plays and I rather enjoy it. And which is surprising because I'd usually don't like making a lot of decisions in games. What I have been doing in the last couple of games is going to pro football reference, going to the game I'm playing. And then I see who was in the game. And okay. So these are my, the guys that carried the ball. This guy was one. This guy was two. This guy was three. Who who caught the ball? This guy caught the most, by, followed by this guy and this guy. And the, I set them up in order on my table. And so now when I play the game, I know who's supposed to get the ball the most and who's supposed to get the ball the least. And again, you know, it's, it's my game, my way, my universe. So I don't want to be tied to reality too much, but I have a starting point now. So I know that, you know, the, Tony Dorsett's going to get most of the carries like you would in real life. And, you know, maybe, you know, Robert Newhouse only gets half as many as Dorsett. And so I kind of follow that pattern there. But, you know, calling calling your own plays, it can be a negative and can be a positive, depending on what you want to do. So I'll, I'll let you make up your mind on that there. Let's talk about the master game a little bit, okay? Um, I have the master chart and the master rules, and most of the master stuff is geared towards head-to-head. You know, when you're talking about shuffling guys in and, and doing that and, and this, that, and the other thing, it really is for head-to-head because you, you're kind of matching wits with your opponent. You know what I mean? So you're saying, I'm going to bring in an extra tight end, so now I'm going to bump my offense up. And he goes, well, I'm going to bring in this. It's going to bump my defense up. Well, maybe you're bluffing him and you're going to go with a pass anyway rather than a run or something like that. So it's kind of a, you know, a, a, a thinking man's game 
you know, when you're playing the head to head, if you're using a whole bunch of the rules and, and, and Greg was talking a little bit about that and, you know, some of the schemes that he was using, but well, I'm just playing solo. So I, I'm kind of cherry picking what master game rules and things that I want to use. Uh, I am using the master charts for my game. And what's fun about that is it adds the draw play and the screenplay. So it adds a couple of plays to your repertoire, which I, I don't use as much as I used to. But every now and then I will use a draw or a screen pass just to kind of mix things up. And so I use um, I like the master charts for that. I like the you know the rare plays in the master charts uh, are fantastic. They can get old, and I can see how they would get really old. But I still use them, and that's when it brings into uh, you know brings in the offensive guard card once in a while. Um, it brings in a, a crazy play that happens, and it just spices up the game for me. The rare play. Excuse me, the rare plays are great. So they spice up the game. And um, so I really do like the rare plays. Uh, I like the, the master charts because they're, they're broken into quarters. So you have, you have, you have um, an outside run. You know, let's just say it's B index and it's, uh, you know, standard defense. It's That is split up into first and fourth and second and third quarters. So you get two different results. And sometimes it's better for the second quarter. And sometimes it's better for the first quarter. And so that, it just adds some more flavor. And, you know, the game is not so static. You know, it, it. I like the master chart book. That's what I'm using right now. And that's what the one that's got the rare plays and, and the draw play and the screen pass. So I like the charts. I also do like the master symbols. And I'm slowly working them in. I just started to work with the... Um, the quarterback sack ratings on the defensive cards. So now when I get a sack, I pull again, you know, cards that have been sitting there that you think you don't use. I pull them out and I'm, and I'm going through my defense and I'm like, okay, who's got the highest sack rating? And I'm looking at them all. And I rolled a, a 20 sided die and I kind of look at the die and gauge. Okay. Well, you know, if it's a one, I'm going to give it to the highest guy. You know, if it's a 20, I'm going to give it to the lowest sack rating guy. So I can spread my sacks around like that a little bit. But that's all, That's what's on the new cards is the sack rating. Then you also have fumble ratings and, and uh, interception ratings that, that I kind of keep an eye on as well. Uh, there's also um, the uh, some of the players have split ratings for passing and running for offense and defense. And I think at some point I might, I might go with a, a separate pass and run number, meaning, you know, you add up all the numbers and you get, you know, whatever, 32, let's say. Well, again, you know, as a run, you might have 32, but in a pass, you might have 31. Maybe someone is not ranked quite as high, you know, for a run as they are for a pass or vice versa. So, again, that's just another layer of, you know, whatever you want to add to the game. You don't have to. And I haven't yet, but I, I might. I might take a look at this and see if who's got the split rating and see if that is something that I want to incorporate into the game, which is means I'm going to need more than one of these per team because I'm going to have, you know, um, a, a, a pass and a run defense is kind of what I'm going to have. And I'm going to have a pass and a run offense. So I'll have a couple of different cards there. So I don't know. That's something I'm thinking about. Again, I don't want to make the game too complex, but the master symbols – I've slowly been incorporating some of them into my game and learning, at least learning what they are and decide if I want to use them. So the master game, it's really more suited for head to head if you're using a lot of the rules, but I've cherry picked some of the rules and I'm using the symbols in the charts and the real plays for my solo play. And I'm really, really liking that. Um, let me see a couple more things to talk about here. Then I'll get to the chat room, which has been busy here, but it's kind of wanted to rip through my, my review. Uh, I like the newest version of the game the best. And I and I I feel the same way with the baseball and the hockey. And I've played the older versions of hockey and baseball a little bit, and also the um, the old version of football or the one one of the older versions. And I, I think the newer one is the best. I, I like these these cards, the new cards. I like these the best compared to the older ones. I I like how they have the team name and all the master symbols, and they're nice and bright white and the whole bit. I I just like the nice clean look of the newer cards. And I have that set of 79 that I'm borrowing from John. And um, it's like a faded yellow and, you know, it's a little bit different and they use the older charts and it's a more stripped down version of the game and it works. It, it just doesn't work as well. I feel, you know, now someone that grew up with that old game and loves it, they're going to, you know, stick with it and they hate there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, the newer version, I think plays the best. Um, 
That being said, that's kind of a con now, is that you have old and new versions of the game. And so if you have an older version of the card and bought the newer version of the game, I don't know if that works. And vice versa, if you decided to buy a new season, but you had the older version of the game, I don't know if those charts will work with the new cards. I don't know. Some do, some don't. I know uh, Jeff did a really good video comparing the different boxes and the different years to the different cards. And, you know, it to me, I was all confused. So I'm just buying new on the website. And if somebody has a card set for sale, I, I do need to see a picture of it to see if it's an old card or a new card because I really only want to play the new stuff because I think it just works the best. But again, that could be a con having a couple different versions of the game. Wrapping things up, um, probably the biggest pro to the game is the community. The football, Apple football community, um, there's a lot of great communities out there that I've been a part of. Oh, I'm still a part of. This one, though, for whatever reason, this this community embraced me the most and the deepest with just, you know, support and showing up to my videos and helping me with the game. And, you know, if I need a chart, they send me a chart. Or if I need a rule, they send me the rule. Um, I had someone reach out to me and we swapped a couple of seasons. So they said, hey, what do you got for this and that? And, and so they swapped me some football seasons and I'm enjoying the heck out of those seasons. I had another person had an extra football season that he says, you're enjoying the game so much, I just want to send you the season. And I had someone else, like I talked about, um, loaned me his old 79 season so I could play the Buccaneers from 79. And that's just what's going on in just a few weeks with the Apple football community. It's just people have reached out to me and have been super friendly and super helpful and very supportive. And um, that that was the big thing for me is that, wow, these people are, are, are you know really kind of stepping up here and answering my questions not being wise guys, you know, sometimes you ask a question and you got all these wise guys coming in trying to make fun of it. And that hasn't been the case. People have been pretty straightforward with their answers and they've, they've helped me out. And man, how stupid my question is, they'll answer it. Um, you know, having uh, Jeff and Greg on answered a lot of questions too. That's still one of our, you know, highest rated shows that we did was the Apple football show. A lot of compliments on that show. Um, but the community itself has been unbelievable. And um, just, you know, all the people that contributed to the mods to this game, again, not that it needs it, but sometimes it's, you know, again, you got a base game here that does everything you need it to do. But if you want to take it that extra, if you want to go to 11, you know, some of the mods are great. For example, um, I now have someone on Greg's site did the kick coverage. So now if I'm kicking off and it's going to be, you know, D6, somehow D6 on a kickoff gets it. I know that it's, I'm going to look for the third offensive guard. So I'm going to go into the cards that I never use. And now I'm going to use it to see what this guy did as far as recovering a fumble or whatever it is. So someone took the time to lay out the special teams. That's one thing I never did was the special teams. I laid out offensive defense, but I didn't lay out special teams. So I, I, I don't know how often it comes up, but now I don't have to. I have a special team chart here. I also... Someone designed squib kicks and quarterback sneaks. Okay. And I used them both in the last game, that Detroit Green Bay game. I tried a quarterback sneak. Greg Landry fumbled. It was hilarious. I tried another quarterback sneak and he lost the yard on fourth down. And then I, I tried a squib kick at the end of the game. And so there's things like that in the community that have really kind of pushed this football game quite a quite a bit forward for me. So the base game is fine. Again, out of the box, there's nothing wrong with it. But you find these little things that just appeal to you. And you don't have to use them. But, I mean, having a better quarterback sneak chart, having a squib kick chart, having a timing chart for the end of the game to really kind of zoom in on, you know, on each play to make the end of the game feel a little bit more realistic. All these things like that come from the community. And they're a huge part of it. So not only welcoming, welcoming me to the community, but providing – all these resources to make the game a little bit more realistic for you to play. And that's been fantastic. Um, so I'm going to wrap up the review by saying that there's so many ways to customize this game. Again, so many ways to play defense. You want to use the cards? Great. You want to call your own defense? Great. You want to, you know, use, use the sheet that came with the game? Great. You know, many different ways to play defense. Uh, many different ways to play offense. Call your own plays. You can come up to the system to, to call an automatic play. 
you know, do you want to work in master symbols or not? Do you want to work in the squib kick or just use the regular chart? So there's so many things, uh, so many ways to play this game, so many things to add to this game. And I'm still adding things to the game, you know, compared to my first game here to where I am now. It's it was fun when I first played it. It is way more fun since I started adding things to the game that just make it fun for me. And and I've picked and choose what I want to do. There's some part of the master game that, that I I'm not using right now. I just don't want to. And you don't have to. You know, they're there if you want to use them, but you don't have to. But there's so many ways to customize this game, uh, to play it your way, really. Have it your way is, is the best thing I can say. Um, so the pros vastly outweigh the cons. And I've gone over some of the cons, um, but the pros vastly outweigh the cons. And any cons that I have on, on my list over here that I, that I read off today, they are just blown away by, you know, how good the game is. And I'll just say that, you know, the seasons are expensive. That's the thing we keep talking about. Try the game for 40 bucks. Buy the game for 40 bucks and try it out. You get four teams with a game, two pros and two college, and play it. And if the game works for you and you think you like it, then maybe save up and get a season. And... You know, that's the best way to do it, you know? So if you don't like it, then you're out 40 bucks. You could probably even sell it to somebody for 20. You know, you never know. Um, and even a season, if you bought a season off the website, you know, I, I guarantee you could probably sell it at least for half price. So you wouldn't be out all that money. You know, somebody like me, you know, would probably buy a season from you for half price or 75%, you know, if it was in good shape and new, I might. You know, so so it's not like you're 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 out that money. It's not like, oh man, I just blew it, it's gone. You know, you do have something in your hand that you can you can sell, that you can sell to somebody. So um, my suggestion is if you want to try it, get the game for 40 bucks, play the Super Bowl teams. And if you like it, then maybe get one of your favorite seasons that's available. And if you like the if you like the game, then you'll love the season. So that's kind of my view. So I, I'm giving it two thumbs up. Apple football, two thumbs up. Again, not a perfect game. But it, it plays super fantastic. It's super fun. Probably the most addicting game I have on my tabletop. And I got a lot of games that I'm addicted to. This is probably number one when it comes to addiction. I can't stop playing this. As you know, that's kind of what I'm playing mostly on the channel now. And it's because I don't, I'm don't. i just enjoying it so much. I don't want to stop playing it. And again, that's how I feel today. So for me... Um, the money I've spent on this game has been well worth it. I plan on getting many more hours into this game, you know, God willing. I plan on putting many more hours into this game. And, um, I, you know, it just, ha again, having all the cards here, there's something special about having all the cards in your hand for a team and, you know, unpacking some of the seasons and having your favorite quarterbacks, you know, and having your favorite running backs and even your favorite kickers in the game. It's just there's something special about, about having a card in your hand with your favorite guy rather than having him on a sheet. So that's kind of how I'm going to say that. All right, so let me get to the chat room here quick. I've been kind of ignoring you guys so I could rip through that. I, I didn't think I'd take this long on the review, but I did want to give a review. And John says, uh, can't wait to play a game. Ho hopefully they fix your issue and you get rolling. Yeah, yeah. Was, was, were you the ones that got the 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 um, the order from somebody from Massachusetts? He's like two towns over from me. And it's like, if I wish I knew him. Then I'd, I'd give him a call and say, hey, you know, we got, we got your APA stuff over here. Maybe I could connect with him and play some APA. You know, there's not too many people up this way that I found play APA. Um, Charles says, uh, it's not that the price is high for what you get. It's a fair price for how many cards. It's just still too much for me. And I can see that. Yep, it is. But again, if you buy two baseball seasons, you know, you're, you're paying way more than that football season. So, again, it, it's, it's whatever you want to spend your money on is what it comes down to. It really is. You know, that's just what it is. So that, that's the price. That's what it's going to cost. And, and if, if that's worth it to you, then um, then get it. And if it's not worth it to you, then it's not worth it to you. And, and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. For me, it turned out it was worth it for me in a big way. You know, it, it just turned out that it was. Ron says he's got an old 81 set available cheap. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in the, Well, some people like the older sets. Um. That's the thing. Some people like the older sets and will collect them. For me, I, I don't like collecting them. I like the newer stuff to me is, is what I will play. I want to be able to play it, you know. And uh, Rob says, I'm a Charles value is arguably there, but it's a better value elsewhere. Yep, there is. Yep. Yep, exactly. Yep. 
And yep, 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 you can get a hundred, uh, no, ten seasons of something else for that price. Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, but like John says, never, never apologize for your passion. You know, I, I am thoroughly enjoying the Apple Football game, and you know that price as much as it is, it killed me to lay down the credit card for that, that season. Fifty hours later, fifty hours later, and I'm through week one. All the enjoyment. I got 50 hours of enjoyment out of that. Just saying. And uh, Ron says, <laughs> Rob says, uh, the Dave Gardner streams prices. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, you know. And Charles says, uh, just received Heroes Might and Magic board game, which was over $300. So, yeah, I mean, you know, th there's, there's games out there. You know, the Eldritch Horror and there's a Star Wars Outer Rim, Rim game and all these things, $100, $150 for the, just for the base game. So there's expensive games out there, but if that's what you're into and you're going to put hours into it, you know, I mean, the new Madden games, right? All the, all the games, they used to be 60 bucks, but now you got to get the extra stuff and the bonus stuff. So now they're 80 or 90. Sometimes they're even a hundred dollars for a video game. Now hundred dollars for a video game, you know, back when they used to be 60, but again, you get all the extras. And if that's what you want, that's what you want. Uh, getting back to the chat room here. Um, Captain Carl comes by. Uh, make sure you make a note of what penalties were around during the season you played. Penalties and the amount of enforcement have evolved over the years. Yeah, there was a couple things I get confused on with the penalties and a few a few other gameplay things that kind of I got messed up on. But, you know, again, you know, if you play the same rules for everybody, all the teams, and, you, you know, you're okay. So, again, we talk about mistakes, you know. And uh, Rob says a, ver a veritable cornucopia of treasures. Treasures, yep. And Charles says, I like how Quick Dex handles checkdowns. Yeah, I do too. I like how it says check down right on the card. So you know you're checking down to somebody else and you're flipping another card to see who their receiver is. They do, That does a good job of that. Yes, it does. And uh, Captain Carl, most of the time receivers are coached to break the route and head towards the quarterback when he's in trouble. Yep. Well, that, well again, it, it's your game, your way. You know, if, if, you know, if you're sending out, you know, your, your best receiver, he goes out and the quarterback in trouble, he might come back to the quarterback. Um, but most likely, I mean, if you're looking for 12 yards, if it's, you know, third and 10, you come back with inside the 10 yard range. It's not going to be a first down. It's almost like, why bother? So to me, he 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 pretty much checks down. Oh, checks down to a back and he gets tackled for two or three yards. And that's the play. But again, you can play it any way uh, that you want. And visualize it any way that you want. And uh, Fenner's got his app of baseball. He's going to be starting that. Let me know what you think about that. I do like the app of baseball. I might even play some of that tonight, getting back to my 79 season, which is right behind me, right about there, I think, is my 79 app of baseball season. So I still got the 79 season. I'm playing on um, Digital Diamond, and I need to wrap that up. Mike comes by. Mike, good to see you here. And John says, how many cards are never used in a baseball game? Same idea. Yeah, kind of, sort of. I mean, there's... um. You know, some some baseball seasons and teams that I have that, yeah, I haven't used any of the guys yet. I mean, if you're doing a full season play, you're more apt to use them. What I've been doing with the football game, which is really, really kind of neat, and I did it for the first time last night, is I, I think it was last night, the first time, is I pulled out the teams, I went to Pro Football Reference, and who played in the game? Starting offense, starting defense. Those are my starting points. And that's going to be my offense and defense for the game. And there was a couple of guys couple of um linemen that weren't playing for the lions that um were threes or you know not fours but threes and i and i they were the backups that day and some guys came in that were less so their offense was less because i went by the the uh the um the starting lineup and in fact i had to pull a guy off the new orleans saints who started the season with the saints to play for the lions and i plugged him in and i just tried to get as close as i could to the actual lineup and that was my uh that, that was i that accounted for my defense and offensive starting um starting lineups and, and points and then i went to see who um who got the receptions that day and uh i think the chicago game i did golden richards i guess he was still on dallas and so golden richards uh did not get in the game for that chicago in week one so he sat out and um so i, I got as close as i could to the actual lineup and yeah so this, so i got to use a lot of the guys that i might not use late in the season but in baseball yep in in baseball there's um there's there's guys that don't get into the game that sit on on the back and their cards sit there. So yeah, I guess this is probably a little bit more in football because there's more positions and his offense and defense, but it is what it is. Uh, likes the bucks hat. I do too. Captain Carl says, for the same reason that Dave States 
is the same reason that seasoned app of football players have. They'd rather have the cards than the team sheet. It is really weird to say because I was I was on team team sheet even when we talked to John here on the show. And after I got my season in with the cards, you can't go back. You, you just, you just can't, you, you, you need that card that, that those are the stars of the show. We play cards and dice cards, isn't it? We don't play team sheets and dice, but cards and dice. Now, again, not saying that team sheets don't work for some games because they do. There's a lot of games that do have team sheets. And sometimes I, I prefer the team sheets in certain instances. This is one instance where I, I do like having the cards, even though there's a handful of cards you don't really roll off of. But having the cards in your hand is so much more personal than it's on a sheet. Again, not saying that the team sheets are a bad thing for some games, but for me, you know, I, I, I kind of I'm paying the money for the cards and, and I'm kind of OK with it for this game. Random human comes by. All of those, all yous. What do you mean yous guys? With an influence, need to convince Apple to resurrect the PC version of the football game. That would be kind of fun. Although, you know, I'm having so much fun the way I'm playing this with the cards and dice. I don't know if I'd want to get the PC version. Since I started playing cards and dice, I enjoy cards and dice more. I like the helpers. I do like the helpers, but... I don't play much PC gaming anymore, even though it's easier to stream and does all the stats for you and the whole bit. That, but there's something so special about cards and dice, and you know what I'm talking about if you play cards and dice. But I, I would definitely give it a try. And Rob says, would I do a video comparing maybe three or four of the best cards and dice football games? Like to hear my views on a variety of football games. Yeah, that's something I might be able to do. Um, you know, I guess the, the big differences are the quick play, the medium play, you know, drive by drive games, and then you got your full play games. So that's some of the big differences out there. I would say I have four, well, five full play games. Obviously, APA, Salt Pro Football, Quick Dex Football, Fast Action Football from Downey, and I think it was Mean Gene. I have a couple of the full, the other full games, but Mean Gene's the one I kind of liked. The best, I think, out of after fast action football. And fast action football is a really stripped down version of the game. It really is kind of stripped down. But it works. It works. It's all fast action driven. Mean Gene's kind of fun. And there was another one, Goal or something like that, which I didn't care for. And man, what was the one? There was another one I had from Downey that I had to create these ridiculously big cheat sheets because the game was all over the place and I had no idea what was going on. And it finally worked when I set up all my notes on it. But I was like, man, this is way too complex for me to think about. But that, that's, yeah, I could, you know, talk about that. But they're all a little different. They're, they're all a little different, and they're all really good in their own way. Um, let's see, back to John here. App is about memorizing. Once it's memorized, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm surprised how quick, although 50 hours later, quick, that, I, that I'm picking up on the Apple football charts. So now when I see that 35 or 36, I know it's it's either penalty or fumble. I know it's not a nice, clean play. Ones, twos, and threes, and fours are usually really good. You know, five, six, seven, eight, nines are kind of okay. You know, the teens are usually bad, especially for passing. 15 and 16 are usually really good for runs. So I'm, I'm slowly but surely putting the, the pieces together. But, yeah, I'm sort of – I'm not memorizing them. But I'm kind of in the ballpark now. You know, when I see an 18 on a medium pass, I'm pretty sure that's it's either incomplete or intercepted, most likely incomplete. And so I am getting a little bit better at that. I still do check the charts, though, just to make absolutely sure. I never assume anything in these games. And Thomas comes by and says, I played Apple football since 1970, and you are correct about the symbols. Answer a few games, you memorize them. I use a PC football helper to keep my stats, and that makes it really easy. I, yeah, I started to use that uh, the pro uh, pro football helper, I think it's called, from Tom Mill, um, who I was lucky enough to email back and forth a few times before he, he passed away. And I actually gave him suggestions on his helper, and he actually put him into the helper, which is which is kind of neat. And he did the shootout um, uh, helper too as well, which is fantastic. 
but yeah, you know, it's you get used to them. It is it is weird, you know, calling the kicker a, a fullback or a safety. It 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 is weird. And I'm not sure why they do it, but there's a reason why they do it. I don't know why, but I, I kind of ignore when I just ignore that stuff there and just okay, he's K A, he's my kicker, he's P A, he's my punter. I don't care if they call him a fullback or not. Now I know. So when I'm sorting out my cards, when I when I look on the right side and I see all these ridiculously, you know, uh, letters, and I see a lot of uh, a ridiculous amount of letters and numbers over there. Okay, this guy's special. What is he? Is he my kicker? Is he my returner? Because he's not a safety, you know. And okay, yeah, I get it now. So I get it. And Captain Carl says the older cards are more likely coded for the older boards, and the boards have changed and coded differently now. Yep, yep. Look at the copyright on the cards to see what boards and cards are being used. Okay, yeah. And that was one of the cons is that there's so many different versions of the game and different charts and cards that it can be kind of confusing. Uh, Ty says he's excited for his Apple football game. Oh, it arrived today. Starting to get his team light up done. Yep. Um, the best thing I would suggest is, is uh, you know, lay out all your cards, find your guys, put the guys in the game that you want to play, uh, find your kickers and your receivers. That's kind of a big deal right there. Um, and, and then play. Just start playing. And, you know, I spent way too much time before I started playing, setting it up and trying to think what I needed. And now I spent all that time setting up those teams. And now that I played a whole, you know, f- you know, 15, 16 games, I'm not even going to do my team sheets anymore. I'm going right to pro football reference. I set up my lineup with the guys in the game. And then I'm going to, you know, calculate my offensive def- defensive numbers from there. And, you know, so I spent all that time setting up teams with their starting lineups and I'm not even going to use them now because I don't need to. I'm going to go to pro. Now that I played the game and know how it goes, it just rolls. I should have just started playing the game and then I could see what I would need. You know, that's what I should have done. So I kind of did it backwards. And Ty also says, the uh, only thing I see a problem with me is going to take a bit to know and remember who the specialty team cards for the punches and the kickers and who's receiving the kick. Yeah. Y- you'll get so used to that. In fact, um, where's my sheet that I did here? I, I went in uh, in Excel. I created that, that little chart right there in Excel and printed it out. So 01 to 011 and then D1 to D11. I, I put that in Excel right, right out of the book and printed it out. And so now I know if, you know, 02 is my left tackle, 05 is my right guard. So now it's all here, you know, so and I still don't have it memorized. You know, 08 is the quarterback. That's all I know. But everything else is on, on this, this table right here. Um, but as far as kickers and stuff go, you know, K, think K that is kicker. K A is your your place kicker. K B is your backup place kicker. And a lot of times you'll have two or three different kickers, and some might do both. Um, your P A is your punter, and P B is your backup punter. So you get A and B. Just think A and B. A top guy, B um, secondary guy. You know, on, so even on your receivers, um, you get your T A. Now, why they call T a punt returner? I don't know, but TA is your is your top punt returner. TB is your secondary punt returner. And it's listed right here on the chart. So um um so on your punting, TA will be D10 as your top guy is D10 and TB will be D11. And it's all written down there. It does take a while to get used to, but look for the Ks and the Ps and the TAs and stuff like that. And uh, and uh, start with a team that you know. You know, when I started with the Patriots, I knew who their kickers were. The punter I didn't know, but I knew who they you know, I knew they had John Smith and David Posey. So those are the kickers. So you know that they're kickers. You know that they're not playing safety, you know. So just start with teams that you know. And take it slow and just take it a play at a time. And just get used to how the game moves. And you'll, you'll find that things start clicking really fast with this game. It really does. Um, Captain Carl, um, put the special team lens on an index card for each team. It's a heck of a lot easier and saves time. Yet there's things you can do like that. Um, and you think it was Greg that did the special teams? Yeah, he might have. And that's right. I took it from was, um, was his website. And, uh, yeah, there's a couple of great ideas out there that make it easy. You know, go to, go to pro football reference and go to the game you want to play and look at who's in the game and just use that. And then everybody else put off to the side. Don't worry about really. Make it simple. Don't make it so complicated. Don't worry about playing everything perfect. Don't worry about this, that, and the other thing. Just play it. And once you start playing it, things start moving. And then you realize, oh, there's this, and oh, there's that. And just, 
the the game it just smooths itself out. I, that's the best way I can say it. Is the more you play it, the smoother it gets. It really does. And John says, um, "Well, I was the one with the wrong app of shipment issue. It happens. People get upset, not me. I get fixed. Yeah, eventually it will. It will get fixed. It does stick, you know." Ron says he's a uh, great video. I'm waiting for my 69 Super Bowl set to arrive. Yeah, I have the 68 Super Bowl set sitting right here in front of me with the uh, the Jets and the Colts. And I'm, I'm not sure when I'm going to play that. Next Friday, not tomorrow, but next Friday is my birthday. And I told the wife to kind of give me the day or at least a few hours. And I don't know if I'm gonna if I'm going to play that Super Bowl or if I'm going to play the 2001 Patriots. I don't know if I'm going to have them play the Raiders or the Steelers, or the Rams. I'm afraid they're going to lose, so I'd hate to have a game they're going to lose, so I might play a different team on that day, but I think I'm going to play a full game that day. Maybe I'll start in the morning and get it done uh, instead of taking up all night on that, but I do want to play a full game on on the day. I have the day off, just kind of how it works out. I do have to work the next Saturday, but I do have the 19th off, so I might do something like that. Um, And uh, Carl says... I haven't seen the cards that have check down on them. You no, know, there's no there's no cards that have check down. Just if you go to the chart on a medium pass, I don't know about long passes, but on medium passes, let me get my chart out here. So if I go to medium pass, um, you know, there's a like a three yard pass. Okay, here's a six yard pass, a, a five yard pass. Most likely what's happening is is the quarterback's checking down to a back on the play. For long passes, there's really nothing there. He's he's heaving that up. He's either getting sacked, intercepted, incomplete, or he's or he's heaving that pass up there on a um on a long pass. But on a medium pass, you know, I'm thinking anything inside of six seven or six or seven yards, uh maybe six yards, I would say is a check down. And one of the guys recommended that you roll to see which back he dumped it off to. And again, completely optional. It doesn't screw up anything. It's still a completion. It's just when you're talking, it's a little more realistic, you know, that, okay, the medium pass, eh, I'm, I'm going to check down here. Again, it's stuff that's baked into the game. Could the receiver have come back? Absolutely. You know, maybe roll a dice to see who it is. You know, did he throw it to the the, the receiver that came back or did he check it down to a back? Again, it's it's still a completion. It's still going to be positive yards. It's just you know what do you want to do? And that that's the beauty of the game here is it gives you a base and it works. And if you want to kind of finagle with that and add some things to make it a little bit more realistic for you, then you do. And that's what I've done. Uh, let me see. Dom comes by. Hi, Dave and chat. Yeah, we got a little afternoon chat going here as I wrapped up my uh, my review here. It seems weird, but back then some players like Gina Capella used to play a position, plus be the kicker. Yeah, and that's what I noticed about my 1963 season is that there's guys that were playing, you know, on the field, but were also punchers and kickers. So, you know, some of them have a couple of cards. Some of them have, that. They're, you know, you really got to look at the symbols to see what column you're looking at. So uh, 63 is going to be fun. It's going to be a challenge, but it's going to be fun. And Ty says he got the defensive cards because of me. Okay. And um, hope those help for my defensive plays. I think it will. It looks fun just to call your plays to the guys you want to touch the ball on. I'm excited for the yeah. Uh, um, well, here's what I would say with the defensive plays. So uh, on the defensive cards, as you know, you know there's a R column and a P column. So what I do is I say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go run to Tony Dorsett. You know, inside or outside doesn't matter. Draw play doesn't matter as long as it's a run. So then you roll your dice and you look at the R column. So if I roll a 41, you know, it's CS. So I'm playing C index standard defense. So I roll off the door set card. I get my number. I go to CS on the chart, and then that's your result. And that's the beauty of the defensive cards is it calls the defense for you and sets the index for you, A, B, or C. And again, as I talked about, for me, that means somebody did or didn't make a play because, you know, A is better for the offense and C is better for the defense. So if a C comes up, defense is locked in, you know. They're, re they're ready for the run. They're ready for the pass. Doesn't mean they're going to make the play, but, you know, compared to the the um, the A or the B index, it's better for the defense. So the defensive cards for me really, really give the defense some life. And I know Jeff said he didn't like them, 
I do like them, and the beauty is any you can play it any way you want, and that's the great thing about it. Um, back in the early 70s, a player named Bill Bradley played for the Eagles and the Bulls, uh, starting safety and their punter. Yeah, well, that guy, um, Pat McAnally from the Bengals. He's a receiver for the Bengals and also a punter. And so occasionally I throw him a pass. You know, when I played the Bengals the other day, whoever they were playing, I had McAnally as my punter. He's got two cards. One is a punter and one is a receiver. And I think that's great, you know, and that's spelled out and I can use that. And Mike in the truck says, can you play someone in APA in chat during the live stream, even if it's just a quarter? Um, can I or will I? Those are two different questions there. Um, I, I mean, I, it's possible. I mean, I'm not a big fan of head to head. I like to play solo because, again, you see how I, I play and I, I, I just, you know, I'm in and out of the game and I'm chatting. I'm having fun. I'm not real focused. Sometimes I get lost in where I am. And I, I don't like to be too competitive. And I like to kind of use my own rules and my, my own common sense. So when you're playing somebody, you know, you have to have a set of rules and guidelines that you're going to use. And it, it's a little bit more serious. It's not quite as loosey-goosey. But, um, you know, you could. I think Tebow and uh, ID were playing one time before ID had his rant. And um, it, it just comes down to picking your play. So I think, you know, what you would do, you know, you, you just have to have your, your card here. And you would be like, um, hmm. so you might be like, all right, here we go. All right, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, what do you got? Well, I'm going to throw a pass, a medium pass to or, you know, something like that. And then the other guy would say, okay, I'm playing, you know, outside run or something like that. So you'd hold up your cards like that. So there are ways to play to kind of keep it honest. Um, it is possible to play over that like that. Like I say, I, I don't like to play against other people. Ron wants to play, and I'm like, I don't know. I just kind of like to like to play myself, and just it, you see how much fun I'm having, just kind of playing by myself. But it is possible, yeah. And, and it's it's something you know. I'm not saying I I wouldn't, you know, but it's something that you know, I guess would have to be the right situation. Mike says O A and O B are the returners. Yeah. So on your kickoffs, O A and O B are one and two, and P A and P B are your punters. However. You know, again, if you go into your your pro football reference and see, you know, and maybe I can do that real quick. Let me see if I can do that. All righty. So here's a game that I played the other day. Let's go to my schedule. And it was the Green Bay Jets game. All right. Let me see if I can blow this up and see if you guys can see this. All right, so I'm going to share my presents, share screen. I'm going to share this tab. All righty, so, so here's the tab. All righty, so if I'm over here, I'm going to scroll down, and here's my starting lineup. Okay, so i got the Packers starters, and the Lions started. So the first thing was Greg Landry was the quarterback, not, um, I forget who the other guy was, like McDaniels or something like that, Scott Daniels. Something. So I had to replace the starting quarterback in the game because the guy that, that I had starting for the Lions was different. Okay. And then I looked down here and there was a couple of guys on defense that were different for the Lions as well, or offense, one of the two. So I just looked for all the cards here. So I started here. Here's my starting lineup. And this is the point where I go with now, as far as my kicking and punting um, return, here's that right there. So for um, Green Bay, I think it was, was Johnny Gray and Steve Odom. So you can see Steve Odom returned my kicks and Johnny Gray returned my punts. So what I did for this game is Johnny Gray was my number one punt returner and Steve Odom was my number one kick returner. And then I looked to see who else the, the card said and they were my backups. But these are my two main guys. And the same thing. For Detroit, you know, Luther Blue, who really um, wasn't a, re a returner, at least not in the pro football helper, um, he was he's my returner you know, on the kickoffs. And then Leonard Thompson was my backup. And then my punting was Jesse Thompson was in that, my number one. So that that's kind of how I did it. And then I make sure that I have um, my kickers correctly, my punters and my my field goal kickers. And, and that's kind of how I, I do it. So, um Again, any you can do it many different ways, 
But for me, I went into Pro Football Reference, looked, and I tried to make sure I had a, every card. If I didn't, then I, I skipped the guy or I tried to find him on another team. And that's kind of how I did my starting lineup. And I think that's kind of what I'm going to do going forward is if I play a game, you know, from the past, I'll try to match up the guys and do it that way. So, again, so the OA and OB are, are your your main kick returners. But maybe for that game, they weren't. Maybe someone else did it. And it's up to you. It's completely up to you what you want to do. It's your table. It's your fantasy um, fantasy world. And so if you want to use OA and OB, that's how it's designed, then great. If you want to go to Pro Football Reference to see who did it for that game, you know, maybe OA and OB didn't return a kick. So they won't be OA and OB for you. And I, I just took some, you know, I took a little notepad here. And um, I just, you know, wrote down who my 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 top punt returner and my backup punt returner was, or the uh, whatever, you know, ten and eleven or whatever it was. And so if it, you know, when it specifies, it goes one to the other. I knew who they were. And um, Carl says, uh, Chuck had asked me to do a replay of '63 because it was Jim Brown's 1800 season. Nice, that'd be fun. And. Fanner says, I'll probably get after football, but he's joining the second season right now. You know, again, it, it, it's, um, it, 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 it's whatever you want to use. It Really, it's up to you. Ty's confused. He, un, he has the same player with two different cards. I don't know the difference in the cards. Okay, yes, some some players will have two different cards. Um, that means they did a lot of different things, okay? Uh, wh which year in which player, Ty? I got confused too because I got two Tony Dorsets and one's a runner and one is um, designed for returning fumbles only, if you can believe it, because he actually picked up a couple of fumbles and ran with it. So he's got two different cards for that. Um, Pat McAnally, as I mentioned from Cincinnati in 78, he's got two cards. He's got his receiving card and his punting card. And there's a couple other guys that occasionally will have two cards as well, you know. 63 Bears defense is so powerful, it's almost unfair. Okay, I'll have to keep an eye on that. And um, to call it set, Devin Hester is a cornerback and a halfback. Um, he might have done some returning, or he might have played some ball on the front. So, obviously, um, look at his card. And I don't I like I say, I don't know. If he played defense, you know, go to oh, I'll see if we can find out on the college set, you know, what, what he played for that team. One of them is probably, you know, he could be a cornerback because there's a lot, a lot of my guys too. Last night I was playing, and the guy for Green Bay uh, was the starting free safety, and he was also um, the punt returner. He did both, so he was the free safety and the punt returner. And there's a lot of teams that that'll do that too, that their um their safeties are cornerbacks will be punt returners. And sometimes they'll use the same card and sometimes they won't. So if it has an OC on the card or OB or a TA, so your your returner cards are TA, BC, and OA, OB, OC. Those are your those are your your return cards. So that would be the returning card. And you know anything else he would be a defensive card or something else. Um, in some cases, there's a second card because it needed more columns. Yeah, that's exactly right. So Dorsett, um, because he did return fumbles, needed another column because he's got his run column. And then um, just in case he threw a pass, is the pass column. And K, I guess they, they could have used K. but Oh, no, because he had a K on 66 and 11. The K column is for his, his um, bonus run. So, yeah, so if he returned a fumble, he needs another column, so that's why he gets an extra card. You're exactly right. Because you get the three columns. It's supposed to be run, pass, and kick, but in theory, it's three columns for different things. Because um, the, the kickers, like the place kickers, they'll be kicking off the K column for field goals and extra points. For the kickoffs, they'll use the P, P column. And P is for passing. Obviously, they're not passing. They're kicking off, but they're using that column for his kickoff results. That's kind of how a lot of it goes. And again, the, the more you play, the more you'll get into it and the more that things will just make more sense. And, and right now, it's not making a lot of sense, and it didn't for me. But as you get into it, things will just make more sense. And instinctively, you go, okay, where's my kicker? Who's my KA? Here he is right here, you know, Tony Frisch or whoever. Sometimes you'll just memorize the kickers so you know who they are. But just stick with it, and it'll get it'll get easier. It will get real easy. 
Um, yeah, one's for kick and punt returns and the other use for his regular use. That's what I'm thinking, too. That's what I'm thinking, too. TAP OBK is listed on one of the cards. So I'm guessing that's the kick and punt returns. Yeah, so TAP means he is the um, number one punt returner. And when, when he rolls for a punt return, you're rolling off the P column. Okay. OBK means that he's the second kick return on kickoffs. And if you if he returns a kickoff, you go to the K column. So you can see that you know P will be for the punt column and K for the um the kickoff column. So he's got two different columns there. So that would be your punt returner card. Yes, you are correct. And and Devin Hester was fun to watch. He really was. All right, well, I'm going to wrap things up here. I just wanted to kind of get my – I didn't expect to go this long, but I did want to get my um, my Apple football official review done. And so now that's out of the way, and we all know what I think about it, the pros and the cons, and hopefully you can decide if this game is for you or not. Again, any questions, um, I'll do my best to answer. I'm not an expert, but I, I played quite a bit, and I have a pretty good idea what's going on. And if I don't know, then obviously the community will help out because the community has been so good helping me out. And there's, there's crazy things that happens on the charts. For example, you know, Brian Sipe, you know, gets a scramble rating and fumbles on the scramble. And I roll on the fumble. I rolled a 66 on the fumble chart. And it was like 5305, meaning that he ran 53 yards and then fumbled and it was recovered by the offense. So a 66 being good means that the fumble turns out to be a good fumble. So as it turned out, because he ran 53 yards, he ran into the end zone and he never fumbled because he he crossed the goal line and it's a touchdown. And um, yeah, so I mean, fun things happen in that. So yeah, I uh, appreciate all the the support, guys. Again, you know, um, enjoying it, and I hope you guys enjoy your game. And let me know when you get it and you start playing it. Let me know how it's going. Again, give us some time. You know, I actually put it away. You know, I played it. I was like, eh, I'm putting it away. And then, you know, when I got the 76 season, it said, well, now I got to pull it out and play 76. And then it made much more sense. So I did. I bought it. I put it away. I was kind of bummed out about it. I pulled it out. I played a game of 76. And the second time I played it, it just made all the sense in the world. And I was like, okay, now I'm, I'm off and running with this game. And it's it's kind of one of my one of my favorite games. It's, it, as you can see, it's made a lot, of, a lot of headway on the table. So anyway, that's my official review and chat about APA football, the board game. And, um, yeah, so I, you'll see a lot more of that here on the channel. I am going to try to play some other things here as I get through week one. I need to set up my uh, my little video review of week one. We'll see how it goes. It's probably going to take me a long time to write the script, but it could be kind of fun to do. And um, we'll talk to everybody later. Maybe I'll see you a little bit later on tonight. i got to go back to work. i get some work things to do. And um, maybe I'll play a baseball game or hockey game or something tonight if I can swing it. Uh, otherwise, we will talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.